October 21st, 2020. Today is the winter solstice. It's going to be the shortest uh, day of daylight during the year. I am uh, at Tumco Mine, an old uh, gold mining town. This is the entrance to it. The mine itself is way up that way behind the thing. I'm not going to the actual mine. I just used this as a pull-off last night because it's a BLM land. I am slightly north of Yuma, Arizona. I, I came back to Yuma from Slab City area because the original plan was to go visit Slab City for a little bit over Christmas and then eventually make my way to LAX or Los Angeles. And I was going to use the future unemployment money if I got it to fly to Hawaii because it would be warmer during this time of year. But, however, they made you they made it so you have to pretty much... Test for COVID every time you get on a plane, which means the nozzle thing. The, uh, you know, scrape your nozzles, your nose test thing like I've had before. And I did that once when I was in Miles City, Montana, and once was enough kind of deal. I don't ever want to really do that testing again. And then they are also threatening to tie having to get a vaccination before you can fly once the vaccination thing comes out as, you know, a thing that everybody can get. Before you can fly anywhere, so I don't look like I'm gonna fly anywhere for like a good year or so. I don't know. I gave up on the idea of Hawaii. I'd love to go back, but there's just too much re political restrictions at the moment. So I gave up on it, and instead I decided to go back towards Texas for now, and maybe eventually go to Florida. Just pretty much killing time the next. What is it, four, three months, I think? January, February, and March are going to be pretty cold. I can't go north until then. I would like to eventually go up into Alaska and come back down this summer. However, at night around here, it's like 40, well, here where I'm at right now is 50 degrees at night, but over by where Slab City was and stuff, it's like 40 degrees at night, which isn't bad, but it's right on the borderline of needing a, a heater to get by at night. I started to get in this bad habit of staying up at night and then, and then sleeping during the day because it's warmer during the day. Here today it's just slightly too warm during the day so I have the door open. With the door open it's not bad but with the door closed and secured so that I can sleep. It's too hot in the van. So <laughs> I've decided that for now I'm probably going to go back to Texas for a little bit. I'm not exactly sure what my summer plans will be. I'd still like to go to Alaska for the summer, but I don't know, because if you can cross the border without having to get a vaccine or you know, get tested, etc. To go through Canada and back, that may not be in the plans for the summer, too. It's just who knows what's with this virus thing going around, if it's worth it or not to do anything. But basically, I'm just trying to stay away from everybody out there, and I... Decided what better time than to go out in the middle of the desert, so that's what I did last night. Came out here, got a decent night's sleep, I guess, for what I could sleep of it. 50 degrees wasn't too bad, but down to 40, and lower than 40, it might start to. I have lung problems from pneumonia a long time ago, and then if I get anywhere below 40, my lungs, I can still breathe, but it's very, I'm very conscious of my breathing at night at four, below 40 degrees. <laughs> And it's just where enough to where you have to kind of force yourself to breathe. Well, during the day, it's, I mean, during when you're up and awake, that's not no big deal because you're up and awake anyway. But trying to force yourself to breathe while trying to sleep is hard to do. So I try to avoid anywhere under 40 degrees. That and I only have a 40 degree sleeping bag. So, uh, the other latest thing is I bought a laundry we gotta go do that again and then a bottle of bleach right there there so it's just trash but there's a bottle of bleach that's lemon sanded right there because i'm gonna have to bleach the whole entire van because i ended up with lice or fleas or something again and i tried a flea trap the other day but the fleas did not go into the trap so either the trap was very poor poorly made from uh the dollar store basically cost me like five bucks worth of stuff and i could have probably bought a better trap and everything maybe the fleas went on in there i don't know but I'm pretty sure this time around it's not fleas, that it's lice, because I also bought lice shampoo, and I've been using the shampoo as lotion and, and putting it on for lotion, you know, each day, and showering every other day, and now they quit biting. 
so I think this time around I ended up with lit lice. But between mosquitoes and fleas and lice and stuff like that, I'm just really starting to think van life is not for me. I mean, it's great for some people, but with my blood type, I'm just current, continually bothered by something or another. Today it's flies, because I open the door and apparently flies survive out in the desert. But I'm kind of tired. I'm trying to make a decent video. show you that you can get out here and do this, I guess, or do, you know, hopefully you don't have the blood type that bugs and crap bother you. I don't know, I'm, I'm seriously considering not continuing this life anymore, just based on the fact that now I'm at the bit deal with fleas a second time, or else it's lice this time around, or I don't know what the hell, but it's not worth fighting all the bugs. So, you know, it makes you wonder if I should just go back to regular life. I love the idea of van life itself, and I'd live in a van by choice if I could. It's just I just do not want to deal with bugs, and I happen to be the type that has the right blood type that they all seem to like for some reason. Anyway, that's my latest update. This uh, basically it'll probably be the last video over 2020, I'm guessing, because it's only like a week and a half left of 2020. 2020 was a different kind of year. Of course, everybody experienced it, and I, I'm not alone in that. But, hopefully 2021 is better. California, the other reason why I'm leaving Comney, Florida, or Comney, Forney, yeah. And I call it that because, yeah, there is, except for the truck stop, there is no real restrooms that I like to, to use that are open. There's no gas station restrooms, no fast food. No hotel restrooms. They were all all the public restrooms were closed because apparently taking a dump can spread the virus <laughs> or something. And that's what California thinks. It's worse than worse than New Mexico. <laughs> if I had to rate everywhere I was at, I would say Texas was great. It's independent of the government for the most part, and they really don't care. They do their own thing, and nothing was really all that shut down for the coronavirus except for you know limiting people here and there. New Mexico had lines and lines at Walmart and other places that you go, and they were other stores were not open. Arizona was like Texas is pretty independent, and aside from your regular places like the malls and libraries and stuff, and like your government type of stuff, everything else was open for business in Arizona. But then you get to California, and they had police going around with loudspeakers and stuff like that, making sure that people are wearing a mask or getting a thousand dollar ticket if they don't. And so, I'm gonna go back to Texas, I think. Texas seems to have the, de the best decent version of weather in South Texas where it's like 63 or 65 at night. And they're, like I say, they're pretty independent and don't have as, they don't pay attention to the government crap as much as other places, they're kind of like Montana on that. You know, and I like living in those states where people are still free to do things. Free to make up their own mind or their own rules as to what's safe to and not. And not have the government in their face every second. Sorry if I feel tired or grumpy or sounding over the video. I just wanted to put out a video to let you know what I'm doing and where I'm at. So, I'm going back to Texas for now. I might make it a goal to go down to my uh, Miami, Florida area, maybe, but it's kind of muggy, hot and muggy down there. But I'd like to get someplace that's kind of like Hawaii weather, where it's, you know, virtually maybe a 10 degree difference. You know, you got like 60 at night and 70 during the day or something. So, there's not much of a diff degree in difference. And that's where I wouldn't mind spending a couple months of this winter just to make life better and easier in the van because you can spend days like today you know i appreciate being here today because you know it could things could be a lot worse i could be up in uh, mile city montana or rapid city south dakota or someplace where it's a virtual blizzard i seen on the on the facebook today people send in pictures about how the roads are closed and stuff so obviously i'm blessed in that form that i don't have to deal with that and i'm sitting out here in the desert in shorts and a shirt 
so it could be worse. I just was looking for slightly better than this because this at night here is 50 degrees and it's not bad, but there's nothing really around here but Yuma. I don't really want to spend all winter in Yuma. Yuma's not bad, it's just not the greatest of area when there's other places to explore that are warmer than this. So, since I have three months to kill, I might virtually go toward Florida just to do it, stay there for a little bit, and then come back. And then maybe by March or April, things will change depending on the vaccines and all that restrictions, if they get lifted or not or what. So, I enjoy van life when back a couple years ago when you could go to a library or a mall or anything like that and you could sit there all day long. I enjoy living outside of the van. Not so much living in it 24-7 like we've been forced to do this year. And I say forced to do because I'd pull off, and off in places like a park all by myself and then here come the cops hour or two later telling me that I couldn't be there in the broad daylight out there by myself because somehow I'm going to spread the virus to the birds or something. You know, I totally get their uh, idea of, you know, not being out there in groups, especially groups of 10 or more. But when you're sitting out there by yourself in a city park during the day, really, there shouldn't be a restriction on just sitting there in the park. Whether you have a mask on or not, you know, when you're three, three or 4,000 feet away from anybody else, I don't see what the point of that is. But I've been run off from parks and stuff like that. I'm surprised I'm not run off from the desert. Know, that a ranger or something don't come up here and tell me I can't sit here in the middle of the desert by myself. That's a weird world it's turned into. Thank you for listening to me rant on. I have 156 sub subscribers on this channel and, or, I mean, not 157, 756. And I have 706 subscribers on my other expediting channel. I would like to get those to 1,000. If I could get my subs to a thousand, uh, YouTube would lift the restriction and I would start eventually getting paid a hundred bucks a month or so to make videos. And then if that was the case, I would, from that point on, start, you know, get a laptop and a GoPro and really put time and effort into editing the video and stuff like that because you finally get paid again. But that's part of the reason why I haven't been really making all that many videos because my... Subs, of, uh, like sub count and viewership count has dropped or maintained this flat plateau, I guess I would say, of not really gaining any, not really losing any, just kind of sitting there at 756-ish. So if we could share the other videos that I made, this video probably ain't the greatest. But if we could share the other videos that I've made and maybe somebody get more subs, then it would be worth my time to edit because you would start to get paid by YouTube to do so. Like and subscribe, leave comments, we'll catch you in the flip. Peace.